All right, so <coughs> here's your log laws. Now, there's essentially five laws. If we're adding two logarithms of the same base, look at this. The important thing here is the base is the same. Then what we can say is log to the base a of 4 plus log to the base a of 5, if I'm adding those together, is equal to log to the base a of 20. In other words, we're saying that we're multiplying this here. Okay? It's like saying the, the power of 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So uh, here, these things here we can multiply. All right? So that's the first law. The second law is, and it's almost, if you know law 1, it's sort of obvious that law 2 is the opposite. If I'm subtracting two logs of the same base, notice these are the same, then I divide this. 30 divided by 10 is equal to 3. The third law is a little bit tricky in that if I have a log to the base A of m, then and that was to the power of n, then I can actually get this power and I can bring it to the front. That is equal to n log a, that's the tricky one. <coughs> now, let me sort of go into why that is in, in a moment. But, so they're the three laws. Now the other ones are laws in themselves. Anything, a log of base a to a is equal to 1, and we discussed that before. In other words, a to the power of 1 is equal to a. That's essentially what we're saying. And the next one is a to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, going back and using our inverse logarithms, we'll explain that one there. So we've talked about that today. So let's go ahead and put these rules into practice. And believe me, you'll need to practice them. The important thing is to note that these rules only apply when we have logarithms of the same base. You can't just go applying this and adding and when you're adding subtracting logs. What students do is they make mistakes along the way because they're trying to apply these rules for two logs with, this, with a different base. But we've got some quite easy examples and that's what you're going to really be trying today. So for this one, this is law one. I've got log A. Given the fact that we've got the same base and we're adding them together, we can multiply these. 8 times 3 is 24. <clears throat> Should be pretty straightforward. Over here we've got the same base of B. When I'm subtracting two logs of the same base, log to the base B simplified 12 over 4, which is simplifies to log to the base B of 3. <clears throat> Now, this is the important thing over here. You can see there that we can't just add and subtract. We can't add and subtract logs unless, for example, 4 log of 10, this rule does not work if we have a constant out the front. So what we can do is we can use law 3 in reverse. What does it say? It says up here that n log a of x is equal to log a x to the power of n. So, what can we do? To the, using that law in reverse, what can we say? We can say that 4 log to the base 10 of 2 is equal to, these are equivalent, log to the base 10 of 2 to the power of 4. Now, this is law 3, Amelia. Okay, so, so, so what we've done is we've done law 3 in reverse. Okay, this is law three. Yeah. yeah. Now we can apply log laws only because we have to the same base. We can't, we can't simply just apply these log laws when we've got this constant four out the front. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now what we have is log to the base 10, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, plus log to the base 10 of 3. Now, what we can do now is because they're the same base and we don't have any constant out the front, we can say that log to the base 10 of 16 times 3 is 48. And that is our simplified answer. Okay? That's where most students have the problems, applying law 3 in reverse. Yes, you have a question, Sophie. 
Yes, you use that consonant at the front and it becomes the power in the logarithm. We'll get to reasons why later. Now, it says simplify and evaluate these expressions. 2 to the power of something equals 1. What is that something? 0. So therefore, we're evaluating that. And this is what we were doing last class. No, that's right. What about this one? We're evaluating log to the base 4 of 4. Just think about it logically. 4 to the power of something equals 4. That something must be 1. Very good. And this is, of course, law 5, if you like. And this is, of course, law 4. Any log of any base to 1 is 0. And then over here, any logarithm which has a log of 4 to 4 is 1. Let's over here, let's have a look at this. Now, first of all, this is a, an important one. 36. How else could we write that in terms of maybe a negative indice? So 6 to the power of 2 is 36. So 1 over 36 is equal to 6 to the power of negative 2. Now let's do that. Let's do this and I'll show you that there's a quite interesting. Log to the base 6 of 6 to the power of negative 2. Now what, what do we say about that law 3? What happens to that negative 2? We can do what to it? Bring it out the front. Okay, so let's do that. Negative 2 log to the base 6 of 6. Now, any, any logarithm of the same base and, and power, what does that equal? That equals 1. So it evaluates to be negative 2 times negative 1. Oh, sorry, times 1, positive 1, which is equal to negative 2. I'll go through another example with you. Because we're applying law 3, ladies and gentlemen. We're applying this law here. This law here. Okay, what we're doing is if I have a log, and this is to the power of, I can bring that power out the front. Yeah, let me just finish the video first and I'll answer that question. All right, the last one is... And this one... We can say that let's log to the base 2 of 6 divided by 3, which is equal to log to the base 2 of 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, what does that evaluate to be equal to? Log to the base 2 of 2 is equal to? 1. Thank you. Now, I'm going to stop the video there. I will answer your questions. I'm going to stop that.